Meeple Nation Podcast, episode 370, Meeple Nation May News. Welcome, citizens of Meeple Nation. For the next 30 minutes, sit back and enjoy. Meeple Nation is sponsored by GameToppersLLC.com. Go to their Kickstarter and check out their current Kickstarter 3.0. They have packages there that you can get beautiful game topper that goes on top of any table. You can get one any size that will uh, work with almost any table. You can order dining leaves that go on top of it that you can use to cover your table. You can actually use it as a dining table, pull off those leaves, and then use it as a game table right after dinner. You can combine that with the table legs and just make a whole dinner table out of your Watson or whatever size you go for it. Plus, if you already have a game topper accessible to improve what you already have. As long as you have Generation 2 or newer, great additions to your game topper, beautiful mats, accessories. You should just get rid of your dining table and replace it with a game topper with a dining leaf, and then you're always ready for a game. I wonder if my wife would notice that if I replaced our dining room table <laughs> with a game topper table. Not until you took them off to play a game with her. Yeah. Then it was Sounds already like a great set up. Experiment. It does sound like a great experiment. (laughs) Sounds like an expensive experiment. (laughs) I don't know. She doesn't like our current dining table. (laughs) Perfect time to upgrade then. That might be worth bringing up. (laughs) Not sure how far that'll go, but I'll bring it up. (laughs) Stay tuned next month. (laughs) Love their product. That's GameToppersLLC.com. Welcome to Meeple Nation. We are your hosts. I'm Dave Holliday. I'm Logan Howard. I'm Andy Holiday. I'm Nathan Howard. This week, we are talking May news. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so exciting. That, that's it. Yeah. Thank but, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Until next time. <laughs> but highlights. I actually had a highlight that was different from y'all. A little reminiscent from Houston there. What was your highlight? I played Catan with Ashley and her fiancé. Like the original Settlers of Catan? I was... I was really surprised. I went over there. We were playing a card game called Skip Grow. It was weird. I don't really understand it. They enjoy it, so whatever. And then we played Catan. It's been so long since I played that game. Oh, yeah. Like, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had to put it on my 10 for 10 two years back. And that was actually kind of a tough game to get to the table. <laughs> People weren't as excited to play that as we once were. It is amazing. Back when Catan first came out, it was that the was game, it. right? Oh, yeah. By far the biggest gateway game for me. Well, absolutely. Anyways, yeah. I remember we had gone to Denver to play in a Star Wars tournament. Those who went, who didn't stay at my brother's house, stayed at a hotel and played Catan over and over again, which then quickly bled into our Star Wars night. And took it over, and there's no looking back now. What we've talked about several times is that there's good games out there, it's just they don't stack up the amount of time that we have. Yeah, I got worried when you said stacked up that you were going to stack up to other games. I mean, Catan's a great game. It doesn't matter that it's a great game, it's just right now we have different priorities with our group. doesn't diminish that it's not a great game. I thoroughly enjoyed playing it. I was surprised that they owned it, but I was more than willing to sit down and play it with them. So when you say different priorities, you mean it's not a campaign game? Yeah, it's not Gloomhaven, (laughs) it's not some other legacy campaign, story-driven, all those other keywords that Nathan looks for when he purchases games. (laughs) Fortunately, Nathan's not the only one. (laughs) I mean, that's my Kickstarters, too, is most of those. So what we're waiting for is Settlers of Catan Legacy, is what you're saying. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Maybe. Hopefully by then, we'll be at least done with regular Gloomhaven, and then procrastinating starting... Frosthaven or Jaws of the Line. I'm not sure. Well, I'm definitely putting the brakes on Frosthaven for a while. Maybe a year and a half or something after we get it. So much stuff that is getting put on the back burner because of Gloomhaven. Gloom is a great game. It's very much so enjoying my time. Big. Well, not to mention that Frosthaven has even more quests. I think it's 150 quests instead of the... Or 96 that I think Gloomhaven has. Yeah. There's so only 96? I think so. With the expansion, there's more, but... I think it's 96 in the original game, and with Frosthaven's 150. So is part of the expansion the solo missions that you got? No, so it's separate from that. The expansion's Forgotten Circles. That's separate from the solo quests. Which I agree with you, Nathan. I thoroughly enjoy Gloomhaven. I'm almost to the point where I'm like, okay, let's hit pause, get some other stuff played, 
and then we can come back to it. I kind of feel that way too, but then every time I play it, I thoroughly enjoy it. So, <laughs> Thinking of a Catan legacy, I think that's the only thing Catan has not made. <laughs> yeah, isn't there like the space one? Uh, there's a whole oh, bunch. There's, uh, it's you go to BGG almost... and there's a long list of Catan. So Crap. that was the highlight for you, Logan. Catan. Catan. More cool that who you played it with than what you played, I think. So, yeah, that's pretty awesome. My highlights a couple months ago, we started up our group for D&D again, doing 3.5 instead of 5.0. Our group tends to like 3.5 a little better. That has been so much fun. It's nostalgic. It's been awesome. It yeah. is nostalgic, yes. Nostalgic, awesome. Yeah. 3.5 is by far my favorite version of D&D. Largely been fun, though. I don't even know that it's because it's 3.5 as much as it is just what's going on. We started a campaign where we're all uh, Goliaths, and we come from the same clan. Richie's did a good job of putting together the campaign so far. Our characters have been fun. The moral dilemmas, life <laughs> lessons that we learned, it, it's great. <laughs> Some of the situations that happened, crazy stuff that people have tried and Dave's character exceeding that when he was trying to close a fence so I didn't get in the live hyenas, which was... That was awesome. Tons of fun. And then, so my cousin Max, if any of you played Eaten by Zombies, he was the game designer for that game. He came over and we tried a new game of his out that he's working on, and it's called Cathedrals to the Gods, and it was really fun. I think he said they've only been working on it for about a month, and yeah. it was very well polished for only having been in development for a month. It's a hex bit board on a map. There's a rondel you're taking actions on. Move to the next space and you take whatever action it is. If you explore, you're spinning your food to move your explorer out and explore areas on the hex grid. The next action that you take on your next turn is survey, survey. which when you survey, you're going to pull out of a bag, pull a number of train types equal to however many explorers you have on your line. And you can pick a train type to put down. So you're building the terrain, you're building the geography on this map. At the same time, the whole point of the game is to build cathedrals. So you're building buildings on this track that you're building with explorers. You build houses, you can build churches, and then you can build cathedrals. And you're going to go up god tracks. So you have five different tracks that you move up on. As you get higher on the track, the benefits get better and better, and you get ongoing benefits. Each token that you have on the track is going to be worth a number of points, depending on how high you are on the track. It's definitely a game I would purchase. I You would agree with that, David? Yeah, we had a lot of fun, fun with it, and it's going to be good, and I, I hope we get to help further play test and refine. I really hope this is one that he will follow up on and, and make happen. You know, of all the games uh, that Max has come up with and that we've play tested, I think this one is probably my favorite one. Definitely, definitely a highlight. And then my last highlight was my son got a game. He bought with his own money his first game he ever bought. That's a proud moment. We'll be playing a game and he'll walk over. Who's going to play with me? It's this pig that you feed this pig hamburger. You look at the back side of the hamburger and there's a number on it. You roll the die to see what color of burger you have to feed the pig. You put the burger in the pig and you have to push on the top of his head a number of times equal to the number on the bottom. And he's got a belt. And once he gets too full, his arms pop open and the belt pops open. It's called Pop the Pig. He loves this game. How old is he? He's 14, but he's a special needs kid. Mentally, he's not 14, but it's so cute. He'll walk up. My daughters and I will be playing Pathfinder, the adventure card game. And we'll be playing and kind of into it, and he'll put the pig right next to me. Who's going to play with me? <laughs> so, I'm playing two games at once. I don't know how the kid does it, but he beats me every stinking time. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times we play it, and he just laughs and laughs and laughs. Anyway, that was definitely a highlight, to see him enjoy a game so much that he wants to play it over and over and over again it has been a lot of fun to see him. That's uh, are you tracking the number of times you play that game? Absolutely. Nice. Interested to see your win percentage because I was there for a lot of those <laughs> yeah. and I think he won 100% of them. He did. Yes, yeah. he did. My highlights, SaltCon end of summer. Actually happening? Is happening. Yeah, so it's not a highlight yet, but it was a highlight that is happening. So I'm pretty stinking excited about that. Let's keep our fingers crossed that that does not change. There was a con up in Idaho that happened last month. Things are progressing, so hopefully more of these happen. Hopefully BGG con happens. We can go to that. That'd be great times. Conventions starting to come back. Even the prospects of conventions coming back is a pretty big highlight to me. Also looking at my 10 for 10. You guys aren't helping me very much, but... Uh, but I do hey, have... we're playing the heck out of Gloomhaven. 
We are playing the heck out of Gloomhaven, yes. <laughs> I thought I'd been helping you a little. You helped yeah. me with Eminent Domain, so we've completed Eminent Domains off my list. Uh, Root is off my list. Isle of Cats is off my list. And I guess I do have to pull back my negative comment. We have been playing Imperial Assault, and we only have a couple of games left of that. I've enjoyed that. I really, yeah. really like that game. It's one of my tops. And my 30 by 10 does include those games on my 10 for 10, but it also includes an additional 20 games that I have to play 10 times as well. And I have seven games off that list so far. So coming along, have 177 plays so far this year. Should get off the page. You should. It's a quick game. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You could just wait until we get together for a barbecue and Carson can bring it over. That's true. Yeah. He, he can kick your butt too. <laughs> I would gladly play with him. As things are getting back to normal, we've tried to do a monthly get together with our spouses and Logan. <laughs> you have to remember that when you buy tickets too. <laughs> yeah. Did the axe throwing. Uh, but this time we went and we did a comedy show, which was a ton of fun, very humorous, and played a couple of games of Pass the Pig, which I am terrible at. <laughs> Andy, we played with your daughter, Sierra. Both her and Cheryl, my wife, were just... They could roll, get the pigs to do whatever they want. It was like a really tough combination that you had to get, and it'd be like three times. Oh, I got it. Every time. and I I think I only ever won three or four rolls. Had a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a fun game. It was fun watching you guys play. Well, yeah, we didn't include you, huh? I was chatting with my wife most of the time. Dinner and I played past pigs with Andy and his family. Because we were too many people for one table. Right. So we played it there quite a bit. Speaking of dinner, <laughs> reminds me of one of my highlights. <laughs> we're sitting at dinner, and all of a sudden the waiter shows up at my table with a dessert, which is like my favorite thing. To top it off, he had to say something really embarrassing to me. Logan bought me dessert and said, but you have to give it to this guy and tell him this. And... uh and he was really embarrassed to do it. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> it was totally worth the eight dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it was good times, and it was really yummy. I had some. It was really yummy. Dave turned really red, which was one of the highlights. <laughs> yes, it was. I did go red myself. One of my other highlights was watching Carson's face as he was playing Pop the Pig with Andy Poops. Carson is—he's one of my favorite people on earth. So stinking cute. Watching him walk over and, who's going to play with me? And then he pops it down and just his laughter and his smile every time he beat you was just amazing. So two days ago, he did the same thing and I played with him and I won my first game. And he was so mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I won and I'm like, yeah, I won. He's like, you monster, rematch. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just spend the episode talking about Carson? <laughs> Jump to some gaming news. This just in, Meeple Nation has a new webpage. Dun, dun, dun. We're actually quite excited about it. It's far more user-friendly, us-friendly too. <laughs> we're excited about that. On there, we're including some written blogs. Go there and you can actually subscribe and get those highlights. Hopefully it should be a weekly blog that will come out. So they're fairly short. Hopefully worth your while to read. I enjoyed writing my first one so far. Get a little bit of a further insight from each of us as we write in that blog. You can find the link to our latest episode there easily, links to past episodes, and you can find links to our Twitter, Instagram, Discord channel, Facebook, Meeple Nation Off Air, Facebook group. And the bios. And our bios, yeah. We'd love for you to go check out our webpage. And if you have any feedback, let us know. How do they find this webpage? Just go to MeepleNation.com. Please, go check it out. MeepleNation.com. Who's excited about new games? One that hopefully I'll enjoy it as much as I do the base game is Camel Up Off-Season. So Camel Up Off-Season is one to five player game where each player controls a camel, tries to pack goods, so it doesn't have the pyramid. A little bit different, but I'm hoping that it will still have the fun and the humor that uh, we've had with Camel Up. Looking forward to that one. Camel Up off-season. One I'm looking forward to is Museum Pictora. We had a really good time playing Museum. Made by the same people. It's a different game, though. It's standalone. You're curating your own art museum. Different prestige points from collect different collections, kind of like a museum. 
I had such a good time with regular museum that I'm excited for Pictora. You see a lot of similarity between the two, but a different enough that I think it's going to be a really good game. Another game that's going to be coming out is called Titan. You play as employees of Stardrill, which is an interstellar mining corporation. And Stardrill has acquired the mining rights to Saturn's largest moon, Titan. So your task in this game is to fill the hold of your ship with as many units of valuable resources from Titan as possible in order to earn the most credits by the end of the game. It looks like fun. It looks interesting, for sure. It has network and route building elements to it, worker placement. I kind of like space theme games anyway. If we go back to Terraforming Mars, I was optimistic the first time I played it. And then <laughs> turned out I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. But hopefully we'll be playing the big box version soon. Bigger will make him enjoy it better. The designer is Matthew Hudvin. Artist is Sloic Musi. And the publisher is Holy Grail Games. It looks like it could be a really solid game. So this one isn't necessarily a new game. It's called Dominations Road to Civilization. It's been out for a couple of years, but it's getting a new Kickstarter. It's actually a really highly rated game on Board Game Geek, and it looks fantastic. I haven't played it yet. It looks awesome. It has a lot of different components that just look good. And you know how I like games with components. You like to hoard them and steal them and be the banker so that no one can catch you cheating. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I can't <laughs> confirm or deny. But he's just good at what he does. This game looks really, really cool. And it's got a new Kickstarter, which to me, I'm guessing that means that they're going to actually have some new content for it. It's a modular board, area majority, influence game, a set collection, has tech trees and tracks that you got to work on. That sounds nice. Tile placement. Just a lot of the things that I really like. It looks really good. I've noticed that one of the pictures on BGG looks like it has the space map for game toppers. Ooh. There you go. Yep, right there. Another one that's coming out is the mines of Rundar have supplied gold to generations of dwarves. Today only a handful of them remain guarding the fortress surrounding the entrance of the old depleted mine. Or so they thought. A group of dwarves have been fortunate enough to accidentally stumble upon a new vein of the purest gold and have managed to extract a small treasure. So this is a one to four player co-op game. Players will take the role of the dwarves charged with defending the walls of Rundar and the treasures they keep within. So you have to face off against orcs, goblins, trolls, fight hand to hand combat against those who manage to get past the walls. So it's kind of like a tower defense deck builder. And it's by Rainier Kinesia, which I'm a big fan of uh, most of Rainier's games. Not quite a New Age Rosenberg for me. But... Not qu well, I don't know. I, they're both really good designers. Love a lot of their games. Looking forward to this one for sure. It's a co-op game. It looks like there's enough going on that players can take on different roles. It looks like you need to dig a tunnel to get out. People that are ranged, people that are hand-to-hand -hand trying to fight off the raiders. Uh, looks like it might be pretty fun to play. It almost seems like it's one of those, the way a lot of the zombie games are, where you're going to basically be overrun, so you have to try to escape before you get to that point. Hold them off. I like stuff like that, where, okay, I'm going to build my characters kind of like the tank guy to hold off the pass while you guys do your stuff. I like that kind of cooperation. And so, I just got lucky and I can do this. Specialize in my characters. Yeah, you customize your characters with what's available. It'll be interesting to see how, how the deck builder side of it works as far as that goes. You know, do that customization and specialization of your characters. So these are all games that are coming out. They're announced. They don't have release dates that are in the near future just yet. Some games that are out now. The one that I'm excited about is Island Siege. There's a couple of things that are interesting on this. It's a one to four player game, but the time is 12 to 48 minutes. That's what I was most intrigued about was the 12 minutes. Like, I'm sure it's not necessarily 12 minutes, but possibility of the game being that quick is pretty awesome. So Island Siege is a fast playing game of fort building colonization in the Caribbean Sea. Players build shoreside forts to defend their colonists from attack and score points. Forts allow you to put colonists in play, which in turn can safely build ships and other buildings, providing abilities and points, helping your civilization grow. Attacking allows you to take down your opponents, so it's a conflict game. Dave, you'll like that. 
this is a re-implementation of a two-player game. So this is the anniversary version. Takes it up to four players. I'm excited. Give it a try. But once again, I'm at 12 to 48. It appears that every player you add is going to add 12 minutes to the game, which is kind of unique, I guess. It's an interesting time frame. We'll have to see how that goes. Can you imagine that on playtesting to figure out that it's 12 minutes to add one player to the game? Could be timed, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess could so. Just be a timed thing. That could be. You're you're absolutely right. It could be. We'll see what that brings. Another new one called Cryo. Cryo. This is another one that looks pretty cool. It's a game where competing factions must scavenge the wreckage of their colony ship to survive. So space. Yes, it is space. It is the final frontier. It's a majority influence game again. Hand management, worker placement, in-game bonuses. But what happened is a mission went wrong. And tensions continued to mount aboard your colony ship as the days dragged on. Where did this accent come from? <laughs> I liked his accent. It's better than his other accent. An anonymous act of sabotage has sent the ship plummeting to the surface of a frozen, uncharted planet. That's the scenario. A lot of cool components. A lot of stuff going on. One that I'm really intrigued about is shifting stones. One to five players. About 20 minutes. You have a grid of what looks like nine tiles like create a pattern, but you have a hand that you're trying to maximize the amount of matching patterns to what you have in your hand. But every time you use your turn to shift something to match something in your hand for victory points, you have to discard a card. So the maximum amount of victory points goes down. I like that idea. I already know I'm not going to be very good at this game because mm -hmm. I'm not at those types of games, but I thoroughly enjoy playing them. Yeah, this is definitely one of those abstract games, pattern building. What is attractive about it is the playtime, 20 minutes to play a game. It says it's best with two. If you like that abstract type of game where you're, that can, and the price, I mean, it looks like you can get it for under 20 bucks. Definitely worth looking at if you are into the more abstract pattern building type games. So another one that is out and we should be getting soon is Koihaku, which is a one to four player games. Again, has that lower playtime of 30 to 45 minutes. You have a peaceful koi pond. It's a tile laying game. Players are going to draft koi and feature tiles to add to their central pond to create their own personal koi pond. I really enjoy tile placing games. I don't know why I find them so fun, but I do enjoy them. So I'm really looking forward to this. Players will score points by surrounding flowers with koi containing matching colors, placing frogs. Similar to games like Cottage Garden, Patchwork, even games like Asul, similar to like Nova Luna. Games like this I really enjoy. Short, simple playtime. I'm looking forward to this one. One that I have to talk about because apparently I just love murder. <laughs> the it's mysteries, mysteries, man. Oh, why didn't I see that? <laughs> the key murder at the Oakdale Club. A dramatic series of murders have shocked the golf club. Three people were killed, and the players start their investigations to examine the clues and the perpetrators, times of the crimes, murder weapons, crime scenes, and getaway vehicles. So you need to generate the number code to put the perpetrators behind the bar. Behind bars, not the bar. Maybe there's only one. I could just walk into it. <laughs> Three guys walk into a bar. Why didn't the other two stop? <laughs> Sorry. One of the things I find most interesting about this is that it's not necessarily the fastest investigator who figures it out wins the game. It's the most effective one. It's kind of like the opposite of games like PI, where you're rewarded because you were able to luck out slash be clever enough to figure out your stuff the fastest, and so you won. And so this game, it's going to be more detailed-oriented about whether or not you get all the details correct. Well, it sounds like a game I need to play with Dave, because apparently I can beat Dave at PI most of the time. Most other yep. games... Dave beats me most of the time. There is another game that is right up our alley because it's a campaign game. Ooh. It's actually a game within a game within 1994. <laughs> yeah, I read that. I was like, I don't quite know what that means, <laughs> but it looks cool. This is a unique cooperative board game. It's of story, strategy, and code breaking. What's the name? The name? The name is The Initiative. I'm looking forward to this game. I think it's going to be good. It, it looks good. So it's 30 to 60 minutes, but it's broken up into chapters. Similar to Forgotten Waters, where you have several chapters. 30 to 60 minutes to get through a chapter. 
which is the campaign part of it, playing through this narrative. You take on the role of teenagers in 1994 who have found a mysterious board game called The Key. Not only will you play The Key, but the players will help the teens through a pivotal chapter of their lives by following a series of missions that link together via an interactive comic book. So it looks very, very unique. You start each campaign by reading a page of the comic book, and then the story advances. And it's kind of like a legacy game as far as this goes. So even if you fail a mission, the story advances. Uh, you don't get a chance to redo that particular mission. Once again, similar to a legacy game, when you win a mission, then it will give you some sort of reward in the future. And each character builds on the knowledge and story from previous chapters to weave the narrative, to advance the code breaking and the mystery into a thrilling game experience. Looks really fun. I don't know if I'm emotionally ready for the decade that I grew up in to be part of old time, like the retro <laughs> we're going to throw back. Um, Welcome to almost middle-aged. But it has some area move elements to it, deduction, obviously with the code-breaking side of it, scenario mission, campaign game, and it has variable player powers. So each player is going to have their own unique abilities. So Sounds very interesting. And that is called The Initiative. Let's jump into a couple of Kickstarters before we're done. Canvas, Canvas Reflections, is going currently. We've really enjoyed Canvas. I've had a lot of fun with that. What a pretty game. The great thing is you look at the cover of Canvas Reflections, and it actually is a continuation of the picture from Canvas. Oh, really? You have the picture continues on. When you hang them on your wall, you can hang them side by side, and they'll look beautiful. It introduces more cards, and it introduces reversible cards. So when you're sliding those cards to create your artwork, you could actually reverse it and use it differently than the side that you're seeing when you're drafting them. The thing I really liked about Canvas is it took the card building that Mystic Veil had, but put it in a completely different style of game. And I think they did a great job with it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm excited that they're adding more content to this. Something that was so abstract, it was simple, I enjoyed it. It was just one of those games that it wasn't very heavy, but... It was okay. That's the vibe we were going for. Yeah, and it, it, there's enough to keep you there and keep you engaged in the game. Your game, Hexplorit, is coming out with more content, Nathan. It is, you know, and that's I'm excited about it, but we still haven't played the second Kickstarter. <laughs> that's kind of like my uh, Thunderstone quest. Thunderstone quest, yeah. Haven't played much of the second content. I ended up not backing the third one for that reason. I'm excited for Hex Explored. I've really enjoyed the game. I like that it can go up to seven players and not really drag out the game. The variance that the expansion from the first version brings, I think this is going to be great. Looking forward to it. The Domain of Mirza Noctis. I've only played the game I played over here for Game Night. It was a really fun game. I'm excited to get the Kickstarter that we haven't played out and play that. And this looks awesome as well. So if Export is something you guys play at your game table, this is definitely something you're going to want to check out on Kickstarter. And it's not on Kickstarter. It's actually on GameFound. On GameFound. Check it out on GameFound. So Dreamweavers is a, a new game. looks pretty cool, actually. Inside the unconscious mind of every being lives the world huh. of dreams. Morpheus, the orchestrator of Nightmares in Paradise, has filled countless minds with terror and wonder. Over time, Morphe has recruited help, and he's named them Dreamweavers, Architects of the Unconscious. Once again, time for new recruits to join the realm. So it's a team-based game. One of the mechanisms is tug-of-war, which I find that a little interesting. That is interesting. Like the balance of power, right? So I'm, I'm gonna, guessing that's I'm guessing, yeah. Yeah, what that is. Players form two teams and take turns influencing a subject's dreams with their actions. So they can draw cards and gain resources, play a card into the play area, complete an objective, or claim a dream to score points. Looks pretty interesting. I am always fascinated with this maybe abstract. I don't know if that's the right word for it. but Definitely has a unique theme. Which is sure. always interesting to find a new theme or a new mechanic, like you mentioned with Canvas, taking that mechanic that we found in Mystic Veil vale and adapting it to mm -hmm. something completely different. I don't know if it's completely different, but different anyway. Interested to see how this game turns out. Yeah, you don't see many games like this that have that are team games where you have two teams pitted, you know, against each other. In this scenario that's more of a dare I say party game type mechanic. 
If it's fun, it's not a party game, right? That's, that that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Me, on the other hand, I enjoy several party games. It's okay. You're okay. <laughs> we won't hold that against you. All right, so that's a sampling of some Kickstarters are out there. Our episodes run a little bit long. We will end it there. Good stuff coming up, though. And, stuff to look forward and to. Definitely some good stuff that's freshly out. There's always new games. There's so many games, and you can only pick a couple that stick out. Hopefully one or two stuck out to you. And as always, visit us online and let us know. Check out the new website, MeepleNation.com. Dot com. Until next time, we'll see you at the game table.